Definitely. Biggie Smalls. Now, you had the opportunity to work with him, be around him, I'm sure, on numerous occasions, man. Could you just talk about, you know, how it was to be around him and especially creating music with Biggie Smalls for our listeners? I mean, you know, when you're around a legend, man, like you just know it. Like he was New York. Like he was the king of New York. Like he really, really was. And he was crowned the king by New York. Like he never said, I'm the king of New York. He had his Frank White thing. He put a couple of things out there, but they, man, I don't know if there ever going to be anybody that get love like Biggie. You know what I mean? He was on Rakim love status. When Biggie was there, him and Rakim was running a close parallel as far as respect wise. Um, but my personal experiences with them, like I had an opportunity to perform and and talk to him, like in like when we were in the tunnel with Easy, we was kicking it with Big. When he was over there talking to Ice Cube, we was over there kicking it with Big. Mm-hmm. Um, just um, when we got into it in New York with some niggas, Big was there. Like he told me, go get your niggas, get your niggas, and get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I sat down with Big, the studio session, I just had the opportunity to just smoke and drink with my nigga and just talk with my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, and just just like listening to music and how you doing. And you remember when we was in the tunnel, we da, da, da. and it, you know, it it was it was memorable than a motherfucker, man. It was just, and you I I'll always hold on to that. I seen in my dreams, you know what I'm saying? So I know there was some sort of a close bond and a close relationship when you see a motherfucker in your dreams and they talking to you and shit and they telling you what's up and how they doing and what's, what's going on over where they at. So definitely it's memorable, man. It was memorable. I know I ain't the only one, but I'm one of them ones that had a had a real, real few good times, few good moments with him. Right now, speaking of him, you know, and Pac, how did you feel, you know, when that whole thing went down between the East and the West and them two, what do you think? And from your uh, perspective, that went wrong. Biggie and Pac beef. Um, like now that you mean now, like, cause I know the shit like now I think that, Oh boy, uh, uh, Jimmy, uh, the, the guy who set up, uh, the guy who set up Pac, I don't really like, uh, throwing names out there. It's already known or whatnot, right. but, the dude who set set Pac up, I just think that he was so street that, you know, I guess Biggie couldn't go against the grain. You know what I'm saying? And I think everybody knew. And, you know, I, I guess Pac felt some kind of a way. And I don't even think to like to this, like when I walked into the um in the studio with with uh for the Biggie session, my little brother, rest in heaven, Capital Confucius. He um he walked in with a Tupac shirt on. Mm. Biggie didn't flinch. Like Biggie didn't it, he had Biggie didn't even seem like he even he wasn't mad he wasn't uncomfortable. So I could tell energy and vibe wise he had too much love. And this was after Pac got killed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This after Pac was murdered. You feel me? I mean, Lil C's was a little upset with my little brother, and they got the. Uh, eye bugging each other for about 15, 20 minutes till I sent my little nigga out. And I started realizing like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is fucked up. <laughs> like, Man. you know, you don't be thinking and shit. You know what I'm saying? Cause, but yeah, I think everybody in the world knew Biggie didn't have nothing to do with it. He was just a victim of association, basically. To cut the story short, you know? Those are two legends we damn sure miss, especially today, because you did obviously the curiosity is where they would have been now, where the evolution of music would have been, mind, business, et cetera. That kind of tra- wants me to transition into carbon monoxide, man. You dropped that a few months back right off the hills of your beef. I don't want to say beef, I misunderstand, whatever you want to call it with the Migos. One of my favorite bodies of work as well, I think more so because of the timing, obviously it was something that uh, a hip hop listener from our generation definitely appreciated because we were kind of a little bit sick of the mumble and, and all that shit, even though you got a little bit of a more of appreciate of it now. Talk about the uh, the layout of Carbon Monoxide. I know you said you were about to go on tour and do your thing with Carbon Monoxide and transition into your new album. Can you just talk about the layout of Carbon Monoxide, motivation behind it, and, and what was next for it? Well, I mean, I think that them young bulls kind of motivated me 
and inspired me to a certain extent. And I had the, I had the majority of it mostly for Bone Thugs and Harmony. Like there's a song on there called, I remember what Easy said. There was a song that didn't make it on there called It's Still More Murder. So I was, I was uh, putting together this record for all Bone Thugs and Harmony, but my guys, you know, everybody was over here, everybody was over there. You know, my niggas was like doing the road thing and you know, just it just wasn't clicking like shit supposed to click musically or record wise. And, you know, so I decided to continue with what I was doing and it just got better and better and better each song that I started completing in the studio. And then my producer, Blaze, he was the one that he, he's been in the, the thick of Bone Thugs and Harmony music. So putting all of this stuff together was fairly easy. And I had to make sure I added in the stuff about them young bulls just because um, it was like people wouldn't stop. Like, I, like you know, for instance, I was on Instagram Live. I, you know, I had a couple too many glasses of wine <laughs> and I, um, I pulled out a couple of guns. You know what I'm saying? I pulled out 357. I pulled out my shit, just, you know, my shotgun. Everybody call it the musket. And then they tried to say I was saying that towards them young bulls, but I wasn't talking about them young bulls. But people had put it all in the air. And, you know, the, the little niggas was like talking to Lay kind of crazy, talking about sleeping with the, his wife and, and nigga, you ain't got no money and all this other stuff. And it, it, I just decided to do what I do. So putting all of that stuff together, it just came together and I started shooting videos for it. And then I wanted to give the people a real good record, something that I don't feel like that they received from Bone Thugs and Harmony's camp in a long time, very well produced, mixed and mastered perfectly. And it was coming up off the heels of the duet record I had with Crazy Bone called mm -hmm. New Waves. And the New Waves record, I felt like it should have done a whole lot better, but I started boxing with the label we was fucking with because I was putting up like uh, like $200,000 and they didn't want to put up two hundred dollars with me. And I'm like, why the fuck should I spend all my goddamn money and y'all not going to spend no motherfucking money? Right. You know, y'all should match me. If I'm going to put it up, match me and then give me back my investment. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And then it was just, it got to be this, this, that, and these motherfuckers is getting bankrolled by Suge and all. I'm like, you know what? And that's why I decided to do it all myself. Just do my own motherfucking thing. And um, and we good. You know, we charted, we billboarded, we still doing good. That motherfucker is doing phenomenal streams wise. I'm into the system. I'm looking at how the streams work and it's it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Speaking of that, did 21 Savage, did he ever apologize to you guys? And where's your situation right now with Migos? Did y'all clear that up? Okay, so him and Lay, they talked behind the scenes. Okay. And I believe they hashed that out. You know me, I'm 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 the kind of guy that believes everybody should have enough room to be their own alpha male. Yeah. Like give everybody enough space, let you be a man. You feel me? So I believe they hashed that thing out there. Um, even Steven. And like it ain't really nothing else. Yes, it's done. You know, I, you know, I said what I said and you know, they took the high road, I guess, or you know, whatnot, and everything is good. Like I'm, I'm chilling, they chilling, I'm chilling. 21 Savage and Lay, they chilling. Everybody seem to be living their life at this point. So ain't no sense in poking and jabbing or nothing like that. You know what I mean? And it is what it is, you know? Yeah, by the way, who do you feel is one of the greatest group about to say? Cause that's what the whole argument, you know, stemmed from. Who are you? I mean, I think that, you know, first we say Sugar Hill Gang. You know, we go get them. Got to start grabbing motherfuckers first before you get put into the into the what you call. So I would start grabbing a lot of old school, old school motherfuckers like who started this shit. And then I'd move up the motherfucking ladder, you know, food schnickens, poor righteous teachers, dies mm -hmm. effects. I hit motherfuckers from the, I'm a southpaw. So mm -hmm. I hit I, I hit different. You know what I mean? So. That's why I would go, I would rise it like that. And then NWA, of course, and you know, that, that whole, that whole thing. And then add in cash money and add in, you know what I'm saying? No limit and add in this one and 
add in G unit. So I would like start naming motherfuckers and naming motherfuckers. So that's how I look at it. Um, and then I like, as far as bone, I think we more into the realm of uh, 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 Guns N' Roses, a uh, hip hop, but uh, uh, things that I think we're there. Mm-hmm. I think we're more of a rock rap group, you know what I mean? To where our reach, so I believe that we're different in our own right we got our own lane and i don't think nobody is in our lane that's how i think 